Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my latest episode of the Vlog of Multitools. You are at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. In this episode, I will give you an overview of uh, the new Gerber Prybrid X. I will give you an overview of this new uh, Byberry tool, which is basically uh, similar to the Coast Multi-Tool that I've shown before, but they added a very big improvement, and they also lowered the price. Now, speaking of Byberry, I will also give you an overview of that little EDC tool, which is similar to the Power Deluxe tool, but they've, again, they've replaced one of the fold-out tools with another, so I'll tell you about that. And finally, I will give you an overview of that ProMaster. This is ProMaster 15-in-1 Multi-Tool, and 15 is the magic number because that was also the price of this when I bought it, so an overview of that budget tool. And the links to all of these will be included in the text description box in the order of appearance in the video for your convenience. Okay, let us begin. All right, the Gerber Prybrid X has landed. And as you see there, the Prybrid X is actually the smaller, easier to carry little brother of the Prybrid. All right, in this whole series from Gerber, it's their trio of new multi-tools that are actually very popular, partly because the prices are fairly low. The Prybrid and utility knife thing is, I like it. A lot of people have suggested it, but Gerber actually brought it to market. And there you see all the functions that Gerber says fit into this multi-tool. So you have a pry bar, a large flat driver, a nail puller, a small flat driver, a bottle opener, a wire stripper, and a retractable fine edge number 11 blade that's also replaceable. So how does it work? Well, basically you push this in and then you slide it. There's three positions, the retracted position, the extended position, and the overextended position. Now this is for when you wish to replace the blade. So how does it feel? Is it solid? It is pretty solid, I mean, you hear that? No, you don't, because there's no rattle. It does not make any noise, that's a good thing. There's no rattle. Yeah, so it definitely, it definitely appears solid. But one thing I notice, this is smooth. Um, that's a little bit of a drawback to me because it does not provide as good a grip as the Prybrid, definitely. When I compare the Prybrid to the Prybrid X, this has nice texture. You see that texture? It's grippy, right? And it has these little uh, indents here that also add to the grip, right? So this is very grippy. This is like smooth. I wish they had put some of this, some of this type of texture on here. As far as the blades, a utility knife blade is a little bit thicker and heavier than, you know, more heavy duty than this blade. Now here is the uh, pry bar part. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to take this paracord off because I don't know, this thing's, it seems like it could get in the way, you know, if you go to pry something you have to always be pulling it out of the way, so yeah, I'm not really sure if I'll keep that there. Now you see that angle there and then that's the bottle opener arm, but you can also, if you have to pry something that's a weird shape, this would also be useful if you could get it under. You could also pry with that. They're saying these are screwdrivers, but you see they're asymmetrical because they're the prying tips too, so they're only really screwdrivers, you know, in a pinch. Alright, as far as replacing, you know, removing the blade and replacing it, basically, how do you do it? Well, you see that cut out there, right? That fits into a little, there's a little plastic protrusion right there, and that's a tab, so you push sideways on that tab, right? Hold on, and try to do this through the viewfinder. Right there, you go. Yeah, so you got to lift that tab, which it's kind of hard without without finger now, but push it in. I think it can go down deeper. Hold on, freaking 
Yeah. Don't, uh... Oh, there you go. Alright, you gotta be friggin' careful with this thing. It's a scalpel, but... So now it's in there. Alright, so... Hold on. Alright. So there you go. Yeah, so that tab, you know, if you don't have a fingernail, it's a little bit of a struggle. It's kind of stiff, but... I guess it's good that it's kind of stiff because you don't want this to rattle around too much. But basically be careful because that thing... I Leave a comment if you manage to pierce or slice yourself with this thing. I'm sure, I'm sure there will be casualties, but um, yeah, that's how you replace the blade. Alright, so what's my uh, initial impression on this? It's useful. Uh, it's small, it's easy to carry, uh, the combination of a little cutter and a pry bar, it's, it's a good combo, right? Because most multi-tools don't have a little pry bar, uh, and uh, so people are carrying a pry bar separately, like a little, you know, those keychain ones like the Gerber Shard. So if you're going to carry that, it's basically like they took, kind of like they took the Gerber Shard and they, they mated it with that little number 11 retractable blade. I even think it would be useful to carry this even if you carry a knife because like the way that little blade cuts it's very different from your knife blade. Uh, for example let's say you had a splinter that goes under the skin and you can't you can't grab the splinter because now it's all the way under the skin. It happens. Well that's the type of blade that you could actually it's so thin and sharp, you could use it like a scalpel. You could actually cut the uh, the top layer of that skin and cut that that uh, that splinter out. And I've I've done that before. And actually, the very topmost layer of your skin, that's dead, right? So if you have a sharp enough blade, uh, it's actually not going to hurt, right? So that's just one example. Now, if I tried to do that with my my folding knife. Even though it's sharp as all heck, uh, it's just not, it's not that thin, right? So there are types of cutting where that would be more useful than your knife, even if you carry a knife all the time. All right, about that sliding mechanism, I have had a few reports, hold on, of people saying that the sliding mechanism on their pry grid uh, was basically crappy. All right, well, the sliding mechanism on mine... Uh, works very well on both of these. It's very solid. There's there's no rattle or anything. Uh, it's smooth. Like I don't have to wrestle with it or anything. But nonetheless, I have ha had some reports that some people basically got a lemon. Yes, like the, their slide was not smooth at all. So, you know, that doesn't surprise me at all because... Uh, the first production run of any multi-tool, any flashlight, like first production runs of some folding knives, they just tend to have problems, right? There's just, a t tends to be bugs that they have to work out for the first production run. And also, they're under so much pressure to make so many of these because they, they keep selling out, right? So they keep running out of supply. So yeah, some, something's going to slip through the cracks. So if you do get one with a crappy slide mechanism, uh, remember, Amazon has a, that basically no questions asked uh, return policy. So definitely take advantage of that. But overall, I like these tools. I like the idea of them. They've done them relatively well, but they're both priced pretty reasonably. All right, so yeah, overall, I like them. I will include Amazon links if you want to pick either of these up. All right, I have an update on this Coast Multi-Tool, which I believe I did like an overview video of this like a long time ago. But let's just review what's on it. It's got a metal file. It's got a reamer. It's got a pen knife blade. It's got two screwdrivers. There's another one behind that blade. It's got scissors, a bottle opener, a can opener, another screwdriver, as well as two more screwdriver ends on the openers, right? And it's got the pliers, the wire cutters, and it has a little LED light. 
And this also has a wood saw. Now you see those back springs on there. The fold-out tools do not have a hard lock. They just have back springs like a slip joint. All right, the LED light is here. Right. Can you see that? Hold on. All right. There you go. So that's the LED light. All right, and like I said, basically has five screwdrivers. All right, so what's the update? Well, this thing has been replaced by the Byberry, the Byberry multi-tool. Not really replaced, but Byberry has picked up this tool, it seems, and they're selling it under the Byberry name now. But wait, they have added an awesome improvement to this tool. They may look the same, I think they're mostly this, the same, but the scissors on this are a beast. Like that, the, the new scissors on this make me like this tool so much more. All right, old scissors, new scissors. There's a tab right there, and pull that out. All right, notice, all right, the, uh, the spring mechanism is different, and that's better. That spring is better. All right, let me show the difference on these scissors. Now, yeah, they can both cut paper, but when it comes to something thicker like paracord, all right, let, let me show you the old scissors on paracord. Not so good. All right, not so good. You see that? Now, the ex exact same paracord, let's try the new scissors. Easy. I mean, no problem. Hold on. You see that. So why are the new scissors so much better? Well, just a lot of things. First of all, this little tab gives you more leverage. Second of all, the pivot is way better, because look, like, look at the pivot on these. Right? There, there's a lot of space around that, that pivot. So of course, because there's space around it, this thing, these, uh, the pivot is like loose. There's like, it, it's not, it doesn't keep the blades close together. Right? And even if you try to compensate by like forcing them close together, see, see that happens. If you try to push them close together, all of a sudden it's not even lined up with its spring. Right? These are, so these scissors are crap scissors, and they're not, the blades are not cut as well either. Right, so for all those reasons, uh, the old scissors are just inferior. I mean, yeah, they just are inferior to these new scissors. These new scissors are a boss. And the new scissors work with either hand too. Like, like scissors on a multi-tool should not have a handedness. You should be able to use either either hand to operate the scissors, right? So even if I use my left hand, right, you just, you see that? So the addition of these scissors make this like just a much improved multi-tool, much improved. These scissors cut better than the scissors on some of my like more expensive multi-tools. Now as for the other fold-out tools, pretty much the same as the old one. It's got five different screwdrivers. That's a, that's a reamer. It's got a penknife blade. It's got a file. Two openers with screwdriver ends and that Phillips so that makes five drivers. Wood saw and the scissors, the boss scissors. And it's got the, uh, the pliers and the LED. It's useful. Now, as far as that LED, there's a little battery compartment right there. Hold on. 
I don't want my little batteries to spill, but basically, yeah, you can base you, you can pull the whole thing out if you want. There's these two little batteries with it, which it comes with. All right, and I'm sure you can pick up replacement batteries, but and it comes with a little a little uh, insert so that the batteries won't get drained while it's in storage, right? So pull pull the little a little insert out and then put them back in. That's how you put them in and it will work. And this Byberry multi-tool did come with this belt pouch. And for the record, the uh, here's the list of all the tools. All right, they're saying the end of the file has a, a hook taker, like a hook remover. And what they call a chisel you know, I call that the reamer, but basically a, a blade that can work on wood. I think that's why they translated it that way. But it, it's basically a reamer. It could also be used as a, a punch as well. Oh, and the material, 3CR13. I'm assuming that the blade is also made of that. All right, so that, that's a cheaper stainless steel, but it you know it's what you would expect for a $20 price tag. At, le at least they tell you. At least they tell you what it is. So in conclusion, the the vast improvement on those scissors uh, makes this multi-tool just a lot better because the the way it used to be. Hold on, is that is that LED still on? Yeah. The way it used to be, the the scissors were you know basically just for paper only, so they were kind of wasted. Right now, that's a great tool set. I mean, it even has that little LED. You know, so I checked the prices on these. They actually do still sell the Coast one with the old scissors on Amazon. It was going for about $25. Uh, Byberry was selling this for $19. So the better one is actually cheaper, at least, uh, you know, as of today, the last time I checked. So, yeah, so a little bit less than $20 today. That's, that's a good deal. I have to say that's a useful tool set. The tools are well done, so I do recommend that, and I will include a link so it's easy for you to find it. All right, here is my overview of the ProMaster 15-in-1 multi-tool. Pretty snazzy box there. It came with this belt pouch. And here is the, here is the tool itself. ProMaster. All right, so this has your typical multi-tool pliers along with the wire cutters and the other tools are a plain edge blade, a wood saw, two screwdrivers, another screwdriver, a file with a screwdriver uh, at the end, a bottle opener and can opener, and that tool which is, I'm not sure if they mean it as a reamer or an awl or both, but whatever, it's a, a punching type chisel ground tool. All right, interesting tool set. This is the kind of tool set that I call uh, the super tool or the rebar style tool set, meaning pretty much everything except scissors. Uh, this was $15, so leaving the scissors off, it's a cost-saving measure. Um, you know, it reduces the complexity of the tool, and it makes it less costly to produce. So for a $15 tool, perfectly acceptable to leave off the scissors because there's many other ways to carry scissors on your keychain anyway. Now these tools, the fold-out tools do lock. All right, that's the locking mechanism. Basically, there's a notch and it is now locked, right? It's now locked. And to release it, you just push on that and that releases it from the notch. All right, so all locking tools, that's good. Now a warning, the blade does not come very sharp at all, so if you do get this, I would recommend the first thing you do is sharpen that blade. All right, but aside from that, like overall, how does this feel? Does it feel chintzy? Does it feel cheap? Actually, no, it feels very solid. It is pretty well made. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel chintzy or cheap at all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, made with, it's made with precision. And for $15, it's one of the better tools. I have to warn you, though, use caution. 
There are many tools that look exactly like this, right? Probably made in the same factory. There are many other listings for tools that look like this, but it, they're not the same. They do not have a wood saw. All right, you see that wood saw there? I've seen at least three different listings of similar tools, but instead of the wood saw, they have a tool in that slot, which is basically a serrated blade with really, really crap serrations. Those are not serrations. That's, that's a, those are teeth on a saw, two, two rows of teeth. That's just a normal wood saw, right? So I would say do not buy all the other ones that look exactly the same, but they have a crappy serrated blade. Sometimes they call it a serrated blade. Sometimes they even call it a saw in their listings, but this is the only one that really has a saw. The other ones have a crap serrated blade. Sometimes they call it a fish scaler, whatever. It's not as good as the saw, right? So don't buy anything that looks like this. Some of them are even cheaper than this. And you might think, oh, I found something for $4 less. You have to look closely at the pictures, right? So I will include the link to this one, which is the only one of these I found that has the wood saw. All right, so that's my initial overview of the ProMaster 15-in-1 uh, multi-tool. Basically, I think it's very good for the price, right? And if this gets enough attention, if it sticks around enough, it may earn like a full review if enough people uh, show interest. Or hey, maybe you can pick one up and you can, you can do your for first multi-tool review on this. I haven't seen any other reviews on it, so you'd be the first, right? But yeah, I'll include that link if you want to pick one of these up. I'm not suggesting you use a $15 tool as a primary. I'm saying backup or a gift or just, you know, for a young person that's just starting off, you might gift them that. And if they do good with that, they can upgrade to a Leatherman, for example. But there is a place for budget tools, of course. So I'll include those links, check them out. I also have an update on this Power Deluxe multi-tool, which I showed in a previous episode. Uh, you know, that was, I think it's around $11. As you can see, it's pretty simple. But Byberry has its own version of this multi-tool with a different tool set, a little bit different tool set. All right, this is the Byberry. All right, it's a Byberry multi-tool. And as you can see, they've replaced the little bitty wood saw with a cutting hook. Oh, and I almost forgot, this has one more little tool. What is that? Well, they say that it's a SIM card ejector and that, that folds in like that. All right, and here's the little box that it came in. Funny EDC tools, fun, smart, free. All right, that's all, here's all the the things that they say that it has. All right, so that cutting hook, how well does it work or does it actually work? Well, it's basically a line cutter. Uh, I have some twine here, right, from, from the dollar store. Well, it's actually from India, but they have it at the dollar store. Let's see if it can cut the twine. One, two. All right, so there you go. There you go. There goes my twine. Well, as you can see, it does cut the twine pretty well. It did not work very well on paracord, but it works really well on twine. All right, and as far as like cutting a seat belt, I did try it on, on like a nylon strap and it was not able to do it. So basically, this is for cutting like twine or some other cut type of, you know, it's basically a line cutter. It's not meant for like a, a like rescue personnel for, for seat belts or anything because you know, it's a small light thing, but basically it'll cut twine. And one more function, this cutout right here lets you use it as a stand. Hold on, I borrowed this, uh, I borrowed this old phone. There you go. All right, so that's interesting. All right, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed this episode. 
of my vlog of multi-tools. Hope you found some good deals, something that suits your needs, your budget. All right, please check out the links in the text description box. Those do help support the channel and I sincerely appreciate everyone who uses those. Stay tuned for many more videos. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't already done so. This has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.